What the hell is that up in the sky? Is that it? Are we now moving into summer? Finally, we're having some nice weather coming after all the winter and the rain and the, and the frost and the, all that sort of stuff. Right then, we are back, part two of this tiny little clove room build that we've got going on in this customer's house now. We left it before with all the pipes exposed going through there. We was waiting for Nye to plaster it, Dave Bishop to plaster to come and patch it up. He's done it, job done there, looks spot on. So we can now begin getting the units in for the toilet. We're gonna to have a 200 unit, 500 toilet unit, and a 200 unit there. And then this side, we're gonna have a little basin, a little small basin that's not gonna to be too intrusive into the room. The customers have gone away for two weeks on holiday, which as everyone will know, that works within people's houses. When a customer leaves you the keys, goes on holiday, it's perfect because you can turn the water off. You haven't got to worry about getting the water back on or cleaning up, so to speak. So like we're working here, I can put the dust sheets out, leave my tools inside the property. You know, it's not too much of a problem. I always put my hand tools on the van though, even if I can leave them on site, just because if ever you're at home and you get a call out, at least you've got your hand tools. Um, as I said, they're away. I've got the keys to the house, so we've had to pop back. It's not too much of a problem. So we've got the cloakroom bits here, concealed system, units, basin. So before I turn the water off, which is over there, I'm gonna go and fill the kettle up because they left me coffee, tea, biscuits. Proper customer this is. So we've got these units into position now, put the legs on them. Now, the distance between this wall and this wall is about 880, it's just under 900 now. To get a unit in this end here, we was gonna struggle a little bit. Ideally, we was gonna put two 200 units in, but it's a tiny little bit shorter than the units are gonna allow us to. So what we're gonna to have to do is, obviously we're gonna have this one here, the toilet one here, and because this needs to be sort of 1800, I'm gonna see if we can rip this down a little bit and get it into that space there. Now, obviously it's got another toilet roll holder there, the same as what's on that one, because that was the only 200 unit they did with that same depth to match that. But what I'm gonna do is whip that front cover off and I also picked up a wall unit there so we can cut that down to fill that gap there once we've trimmed that in. If that makes sense. We're just tweaking it ever so slightly. It's still going to be spot on, but just to make it fit properly. But what I'll do is get these two in first, and then we can sort of make that one um, suit as best we can. It may not be functioning. Obviously, it's not going to be used as a cupboard. But first of all, let's get these set in. We've got to trim the backs a little bit and tweak them a little bit. Get them in, bolt it back to the wall, and we can work from there. So we've been trimming down on these units to get them to fit. I took a little bit outside of this one for obviously the pipe work to go through and it's spot on. So with that in place there, we can level these all up afterwards. I've also trimmed a little bit out of the toilet unit so that that can now sit in there next to that one. Obviously we've got to screw it all together and level it all through and all that sort of stuff, but at least now we can begin getting that fixed back to the wall and then we've got a fixed point to work to. We can get the system in there. But just as a sort of a test fit, then we know we're clear of all the pipes at the back. So what I'll do, get them bolted to the wall, get them bolted together, and then we've got a fixed point to work from. So with these units fixed into place now, we've still got this little issue with this end gap. I thought various different ways of doing it. I thought I could rip a unit down and, and put it in, but what I've done, is I've rung Dave Bishop. Dave Bishop's featuring a lot on my channel lately. I'm in the middle of doing a job for him. We've got a radiator to put on. So I said to him, Dave, just come and rip this unit down for me and, and fill this gap here because we know we're not gonna have it as a, a complete unit. And I'd rather him do it because he can scribe it into the wall and everything perfectly fine. Um, and also then I'll do his radiator job for him for nothing. So it's bit of give and take on that. So he's gonna come over shortly, get that done, see what we can do with that. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for him, we can carry on getting the concealed system in. So I've unpacked it all. I've just hung the bracket. Now the bracket with these, Roker Roads ones, are really good. They've got these two little splints that sit at the top and you put that on the very top of the unit and then that is automatically the depth that 
sister needs to sit up, if I can click it on, like so. And also with these units, with the backing on this unit, we know the bottom of it's not going to go anywhere. So the Roper Rose concealed systems are always quite handy like that. But that is the concealed system in now. What we're going, to, what I'll do is get the pan, offer it into position, and get the flush pipe cut to the right length. And then we've got a flexi pan connector to go on here. I always use a flexi pan connector on these concealed sort of system jobs because you've got a bit of play in the toilet pan when you come to put it in. But it's going to get the pan, offer it up, and get the flush pipe in. So I've got the pan out of the garage and what I'm going to do is offer this backboard in place, clip it into place to exactly where we want it, measure where the centre of it is, which is uh, around there, and then measure the centre of our pan, oh, 36 is 18 right there. And then what we can do is get the pan completely centre of, I'll mark that, of where it's going to sit. Like so. Like that. So that's completely centre. And then what I can do is draw around the outside of where the pan's going to go. Like so. And then when we pull it away, So when we put it away, obviously we've got a cutout for these two bits for the saw pipe and for the flush pipe to go in. We know within anything within where we've marked is all game. So we can basically come up there like so. Come up there like so and across the top. So what we can do now then is cut this out and then when we can offer the flush pipe in and the saw pipe in on the flexi, we know exactly where we're at before we get it all bolted in. Connect the cord up to it and then we're job done there. So let's get this cut out and we can see exactly where we need to be. Right, there we go, with it cut out, I'll give it a water down in a minute, but with it cut out, our panel sit right back there. We'll also have to cut the plinth out when that comes along, because I think we're just going to catch a little bit of it on the bottom of the, uh, the flush pipe where that's going to go, but that is spot on. So what we'll do now, we'll get the pan out of the way. Take a look, getting the saw pipe connected, getting the flush pipe on. So the age old debate on how to cut a flush pipe into position has been raging on for years and years. Now how I do it, I offer this edge up, which is going to be the one that's going to go into the back of the pan, into position, just get down by the side of it, sort of this height where I am now. I up that to where it's going to be and then have a look at the bottom. You see where my thumb is? It sits in about that far into the actual system itself. So if we trim it at that, go over ever so slightly, then we can tweak it. Now there's so many different ways of doing it, but that's the way I've always done it. So that's the way I'll carry on doing it. So we'll get a pipe cutter, trim that off and offer it up and see exactly where we're going to go. Then to do the bit that goes into the back of the pan is slightly different, but we'll get the height one set first, then I'll show you that one. So then with the flush pipe put in, we've now got the back panel on, and I'll show you exactly how I mark that. Get a level on the back of the pan, pop the end of a tape right into where the flush pipe's gonna sit, and then work the level down, holding onto the back of the pan all the time. And you can see that that is exactly 50 mil. So we know now, from the face of here, let's measure out 50 mil, which is there. All we've got to do is cut that off, get the flush cone into the back of the pan, connect that, connect that, push it into position, and we're away. So we'll get that cut off. 
whip this out of the way, connect the cold feed to it, and we're good to go to get the pan in. So I've just come to connect the cold to the system, put it on a flexi, and then we've got an isolation valve here, and I've put a little press fit elbow there that I'm going to press up now. I know a few people are going to say, what's the point in having an isolation valve when that unit, uh, the front panel of that unit is going to go there, and then that top one's going to be there? There's nowhere else to put it in there. Um, so the fact that we've got one going on doesn't really help the fact that you can't get to it. Um, but if ever you're going to have to get to the gubbins inside here, to be honest, you'd be better off. The water turns off literally in the garage. It's a quarter turn tap and it's off. Um, I will always be doing the work on this house, so I'll know the crap with it. So I've put it on as a matter of course, but to be honest, it, it probably won't ever get used. It will just be the outside tap there. So some people go, well, what's the point in putting it on? I don't know, really. I just, I just like to do it. So that's all on. We'll get this pressed up now. In fact, we'll do it while we watch. Um, let's get the top one on. Like so. There we go. And the bottom one. Job done. What I'll do, I'll leave that off now. Go and get the water back on and then we know that all that is sorted. I'll, to be fair, I'll probably even open that up and fill the system because I'm, I'm the only one here. I know that not to empty that system till the pan's in. So let's go pop the water on then and get it all filled up and made sure it's all watertight because these come, they're all factory set, but I'm always really quite dubious. Um, do you just try tweaking them up a little bit or do you go, Right, we're leaving factory set because that that covers the warranty. It says there. Uh, do not do insert, do not over tighten or undo. Um, they're all factory set, predetermined torque settings. Doing so will invalidate any warranty claim. What do you do? So let's get it on, get it tested, and make sure it's all right. Right then, I've got water onto the system now. We filled it up, it's all fine, it's all good, it's not leaking. We've trimmed these down, we've got the plinth in place, we've got a little bracing bar on the bottom of the plinth there, just because we had to cut it in the center to get either end tucked in with them two bits of skirting on. But the pan's gonna cover that anyway. So what I'm gonna do now is just test fit the pan into position. Again, draw around it, and then we can mark out for I can find them, the owl brackets to go on. So with that pushed into position, again, we've got our marks there, so we know it's bang on in the center. Now what I do is put a little mark there and then look down from above and mark just where the hole is gonna be. Same this side, little mark there, look down from above, and that's where it's gonna be. So now what we can do, pull the pan out of position, and what is key with doing this is, if I put the camera there, is to just whip the pan over and measure the depth of what you've got there. Because, let me just open up these oil brackets, because you've got to put that that far in from the line that you've marked. We've marked the outer edge there, then you've got that little measurement there, which is about 12 mil, and then you bracket. So now we know that, let's lift the pan out of the way. So with the pan lifted out of the way, we can measure in that 12 mil that we've got on either side, like so, and then we know that bracket has got to sit within that 12 mil and as you always know what i do with these owl brackets i must say it i say it on every single video that i do i always drill there and there on the owl bracket so that they've got two fixing points when they're down because if you had it just on the one sometimes when you're pushing your pan back you can knock that out then you've got to take it all out again just to do it so i always fix it there and there same on the other side, and then you know it's not going to spin round. But let's get these drilled in, fixed into the floor, then we can get the pan into position. 
There we go, toilet's all in and working. I haven't bolted it into the bottom yet. I've left those out just in case Dave needs the toilet to pull forward, this to come out, this to come off, to do that little bit of whatever he's gonna do in the corner there. Then we can get the work top on and that'll be that done. Right, we're now gonna move on to getting the basin in. It's just, it's really straightforward, this one. Little vanity unit underneath, pop a basin on the top, tap, job done. So we're going to unpack that and get started on that one. So Dave Bishop, the carpenter, has just arrived to trim in this little unit here. He's, he's measured it up and what he's gonna do is rip down the unit and see if we can keep the door on the front. I did say to him, it didn't have to be a working unit, it could have just been the frontage, but he thinks he can rip that down. So that's a bonus, but this simple little basin unit is becoming a right pain. I've cut the holes out, I've pushed it in. If you remember, there was a bit of skirting on the back there, um, but the door, because it's so low at opening on this, wouldn't have opened with the skirting in place. And because this is quite an old building, a lot of the walls aren't level, square, upright. So because Nigel's patched up along there, we've now got a bit of a gap along the bottom there. Um, the ideal scenario is to get that patched in, skimmed in. But it's just, again, if we do that, we're just prolonging the job a little bit more. Uh, as I said, they're away, so it's not too much of a problem, but it's just a bit of a, you know, when you start doing something, you're like, oh, it's a niggly little thing to, to try and get over. So I'm going to have a bit of a look at that um, and see what we're going to do with it. But for now, Dave's getting this unit in um, and then we can get the toilet in, get that all finished off, worked up on. So that's up and running. And then I'm going to see what I can do with that little bottom bit because when that, when that unit's pushed back, like so, and the door opens, that's fine. That's exactly how we want it but you've clearly got that gap on the bottom, so we need to somehow sort that. But yeah, there's always something just to uh, keep you on your toes and to make life a little bit tricky. But I'll quickly show you. So that's the little unit Dave's ripped down. Um, how much have you took off it, Dave? Uh, yeah. So you took that, what's that, about 20 mil? 25. 25 mil. So he's managed to rip that down, so hopefully it's going to fit in that little hopefully, gap in there. Yeah. Hopefully it's going to fit in that gap. I've got every faith in Dave that it's going to just slide in. But yeah, there's always something on these. It's always the little jobs, the little small, tiny jobs that give you a little bit of a nightmare. But we'll get it sorted somehow. Yeah. 